All right, my friends, what's up, what's good, and what's going on? It's Kaylor Betts, and welcome to another edition of the Awaken Winning Podcast. Today is a special edition. It's a solo sode. It's been a hot minute since we've done a solo sode, so we're bringing them back, baby. That's the fucking vibe today, baby, as I like to say. But it's my goal, it's my initiative of this solo sode to provide you with what I believe to be a very common sense approach to arguably the hottest topic that there is in our society today. Arguably the most polarizing and divisive topic that we have. We see all over the internet people arguing with each other on both sides, polar opposite sides to each other. I'm sure it happens at the dinner table, at water coolers. And I got to be honest, when I observe these conversations, I don't see a whole lot of productivity. I don't see a whole lot of progress. I believe there's a lot of emotional projecting and arguing uh, and just not enough solutions and strategy of what are we actually going to do about this situation. I think that there are uh, a lot of people in the middle who couldn't give two shits about this issue and don't really pay attention to it. But I think there's smaller portions of society on both sides, polar opposite sides, who feel very passionately about this issue and who actually feel very strongly that we need to address this issue and that it is a threat if we don't do this properly in terms of policies and regulation, if we don't handle this situation properly. I think there's those two camps that feel very passionately that it is a threat to individuals, their safety, and society at large. Now, I am of one of those camps for sure. Now, I think I'm going to be speaking to two different uh, types of people in this episode. I think the vast majority of the people I'm going to be talking to, for the most part, agree with my view. And it is my goal, if that is you, it's my goal to maybe put things into perspective and provide a very logical, reasonable, reasonable, and like I said, common sense approach, but maybe most importantly to provide a way in which we can communicate to the people who don't agree with us aggressively in most cases, don't agree with us, how to communicate our stance. Okay. Now it is also my goal. And I hope I sure as hell hope that there's people listening that don't agree with me because what the hell am I doing? If I'm trying to make progress and provide solutions, what the hell am I doing if I don't have anyone who's listening that really aggressively disagrees with me? And if you're listening and you do agree with me and you know someone who doesn't and is on quote unquote the other side, please send them this podcast. But my goal, if I'm talking to you and you disagree with me, I guess my goal is to provide you with perspective on our worldview and why we think the way that we think and to hopefully communicate it in a way that you haven't heard before. And I think that, I mean, God forbid, we got to coexist with each other and we got to work together as a unit. So I'm actually going to talk about a compromise. Okay. And that's something that a lot of people on quote unquote, my side for a lack of a better way of putting it are not really willing to do, but I'm all about avoiding extreme ideologies. Charlie Munger said that and I'm not willing to speak in an absolute because we are clearly very divided on this. It is a clearly a very polarizing and nuanced and complicated topic. I believe that we have to meet somewhere in the middle. Just like if you're in a marriage and your husband or wife, you're going to eventually get to a point where you very much disagree and don't see each other's points or opinions on a certain very important issue that you have to take action on. And what do you do in that situation? Because you do have to coexist and work as a union, as a unit. And as a team, you got to compromise and you have to find an answer that's somewhere in the middle. Chris Voss once said that in negotiation, when you're coming up with the perfect negotiation, often both parties leave a little bit upset. And I truly think that in this case, because it is so polarizing, I think both parties need to give up a little bit and meet somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to talk about that and I hope that you're going to enjoy it. Now I am very passionate about this. So I'm going to speak very strongly and boldly. So I just hope that you open your mind and I feel really strongly that instead of cancel culture, we need to move into curious culture. We need to get to a point where we're curious about the other person's view and try and understand why they think that way. Now, look, I'm just going to straight up say right off the bat, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, I don't understand this transgender stuff. Like when I view and observe what is going on and some of the things that the transgender movement is proposing, it is insanity to me. I'm a primal guy. I love to, and I believe that if we want to live our highest quality of life, not only as individuals, but as society, I think that living in alignment with what's ancestrally consistent. We've been around for 200,000 plus years. I think we are biologically wired in a certain way. 
and although I know it's nuanced and complicated, and I'm not saying there aren't exceptions, I think there's fundamental things in terms of how we should live and what we should believe in that when it aligns with what's ancestrally consistent and what's primal, we are going to live our highest quality of life. And that's how I think we thrive as a, as a society. So I do want to say that I think that, and I, again, I know this is where this is very controversial, but I want to say that I do believe that if we just accepted the fundamental principles of biology and accepted that men are men and women are women, and we each play our different roles, we each have our different strengths and we can come together and we make the most unbelievable team and unit um, I believe that's when we're going to thrive. So I would like to see society go in that direction. There are clearly quite a few people who, uh, and, and a good portion of society who disagree with that. So let's compromise. But there's one thing that I think is more important than being primal, ancestrally consistent. It is freedom. I'm a freedom guy through and through. Okay. Now where this issue gets very complicated though, is I do believe in freedom. I do believe that people should be able to do whatever they want, but where it gets really complicated is when it starts to infringe on and overstep and overreach into people's rights, freedoms, and safety. And that's why this issue is so complicated. And I'm going to provide um, examples of where I think this is being taken too far, where the transgender movement is being uh, taken too far. And we need to have safeguards, rules, and regulations and policies um, so that we can balance this out, but I am a freedom guy through and through. Okay. Now the other thing I want to address, and again, this is where people really push back who have a very opposite viewpoint of me is I think this is a mental illness and a mental health challenge. Now I want to proceed this with acknowledging that I lived with mental health challenges for most of my life. You know, I could barely get out of bed. I felt very uncomfortable in my body. Okay. And I want to just say that I believe that there are some deep rooted things that we need to look at. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I understand. This is just my belief, my opinion of everything I know about psychology and mental health and mental illness. It is my opinion that, yes, I do think that some people, it doesn't feel aligned, the biological body that they were given and that they may feel that they should be something else and identify as something else. But I think the really important key that I want to communicate is I don't believe that to mean that it's necessarily best for their highest quality of life to go against how they are wired. Okay. Just because something doesn't feel aligned. Look, sometimes things don't feel aligned and our gut is telling us that it doesn't feel aligned and sometimes it's not, but I think we can't fail to also realize that sometimes something doesn't feel aligned and it's actually just a trauma response. It is actually rooted in some sort of deep fear or insecurity or our shadows or our wounds or trauma or, um, our ego, right? So we have to discern between, okay, does it not feel aligned and then we should change everything? Or does it mean that it's just rooted in some sort of thing? Look, I, I look at my life that I've created and I don't have everything that I want, but I certainly am in a, in a place that I never even imagined. I am living to a large degree, my highest potential at this point in my life. I've built a business, this podcast, and a lot of the things that I've needed to do to get there felt extremely unaligned. They were things that I resisted. They were things that felt very uncomfortable. But I realized that on the other side of those things lied my freedom. And that moving through those things and regulating through those things and overcoming those things actually provided me with freedom. So just because something doesn't feel aligned, that has a lot to do with internal challenges and wounding and trauma and shadows and insecurities and fears and anxieties and the list goes on. So this is a big part of my theory on this. And I think we need to look uh, at those things very closely. Now, allow me to provide a very common sense approach. Number one, do whatever you want. And I think this is the way most of society feels. The vast majority of people are just like, do whatever you want. If you want to dye your hair purple and move to Timbuktu and identify as a lizard and have orgies all day long and be polyamorous and like you do you. If you want to have gender affirming surgery and you want to pump yourself full of medical interventions that disrupt your endocrine system and change your, you know, biological wiring, go ahead. If you are an adult, that is my big fundamental theory is that if you are an adult, but stay the fuck away from our children. Okay. Now some people will say, ban it, ban everything. You shouldn't even be able to talk about transgender. Look, we need to compromise. Again, this is a very polarizing issue. 
and uh, we're going to have to meet somewhere in the middle. But here's where we draw the line. You can do whatever you want, but do not expect to have society change the way in which we have fundamentally ran forever. Okay, don't expect us to tiptoe around your feelings and change our language and change the way we live, change economics. Do not expect society to tiptoe around you, but do whatever you want. I'm a big freedom guy, but stay away from our children. There was a recent study that came out uh, that said almost 30% of Gen Z's identify as LGBTQ in the United States. I think it was 28% exactly. Now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with LGBTQ, but I think this is evidence that there is clearly conditioning going on. And look, I know enough about psychology to know that when you give the opportunity to just a human in general, let alone a kid, to be able to identify as something where we are going to roll out the red carpet and call them courageous and a hero and shine a light on it and give them advantages that not everyone else has and call them brave and, and all these things, they in many cases are going to take the bait. And I believe that that is part of what is going on here, right? Um, people will do, and this is one thing I've learned about human psychology is we are so afraid of rejection, abandonment, shame, and uh, criticism and judgment. We are so afraid of that, that anytime we can get validated more, anytime we can get more love, care, and attention, if you are struggling with internal conflicts, you often are going to take that bait. Now, some people will say, well, Kayla, LGBTQ, like that's where you are going to get judged and criticized. In today's society, I think most places in the Western world or a lot of places nowadays, you roll out the red carpet for anyone who says they're LGBTQ. And you talk about how courageous they are. And we put a crown on those people. And I think we have to be very careful about that. Again, does not mean that we should shame them or judge them. Okay, I'm not suggesting there's anything wrong with being LGBTQ, but we are taking it to an extent where I think people are now hacking the system and taking advantage of it. I think that there's evidently conditioning and grooming going on in schools. We need to take out all the books that talk about dildos and sex and I think drag queens should never have a place because they're sexual in nature. Just talk to any drag queens is pretty obvious. I don't think they have a place reading books to children in schools and libraries. Schools and libraries should be teaching them about the basic fundamentals that kids have always learned about and nothing sexual in nature has any place there. Now, I'm a freedom guy. If you want to organize with your friends and your kids to have drag queens read to your children, I think that's messed up. I, don't, I, I, I think it's harmful and dangerous extremely. But I'm a freedom guy. I don't want you to tell me how I'm supposed to raise my kids. So I certainly don't want to infringe on how you are supposed to raise your kids. Okay? No switching of bathrooms. Okay? I couldn't imagine if I had a daughter right now and there's a, a guy, a biological male, who decides to be a female and now he's in the same change room and bathroom and locker room as my daughter. That is common sense, guys. We need to wake up. That is common sense. I don't care what side you're on. Now... Here's the big one. No one under 18. I would prefer 25 because our brains aren't even fully developed until we're 25 approximately. But no puberty blockers and no irreversible gender affirming surgeries for anyone under 18. That should absolutely be banned. And here's the argument against that. Someone's going to say, well, Kaylor, you have no idea how many of these transgender People who identify as transgenders, children who are confused, who are committing suicide. So you taking away that gender affirming care is going to increase suicides and is going to kill children. That's what I get told when I say this. But we need to be rooted in some logic here. Here's where your argument falls apart. When we ask you what is a woman, for example, like uh, Matt Walsh did in his great documentary, What is a Woman, where he didn't really tell anything to anyone. He just basically asked what is a woman and didn't seem to get any answers, seems to be a very simple question. They will say, anyone who identifies as a woman. But you have to understand that that fundamentally doesn't make sense. There's no logic in that. So you say, anyone who identifies as a woman. Okay, so my question is, is then what is a woman? Can you answer that without saying the word woman? And if you can't, it fundamentally breaks down. But then I'll say something like, well, I consider a woman to be someone who has the biological wiring, someone who has XX chromosomes. Right. So that's or or in many cases, although I know there are uh, exceptions, but someone who has the reproductive organs of a woman. 
And then to that, you'll say, no, it's anyone who identifies as a woman. A male can be a woman if they identify. So then why do we need gender affirming surgery? Why do you need to intervene medically and literally switch the reproductive organs and change the biological hormonal makeup to be a woman then? Shouldn't children just be able to, if your definition is of what a woman is, is to just identify as a woman, then why do we need to have irreversible that have, that could potentially, and we see this, have vast negative consequences. And we've seen this a lot. There's a lot of people out there who as children had these irreversible medical interventions and now uh, have a massive negative effect. So before we talk about the children's suicide, you got to clarify and you got to have some logic here. We have to be rooted in some logic before we even talk about that because based on your logic, children should be able to just then identify as the other uh, sex, which go ahead. You know, again, if that's, if that's what you want to do, you do you boo. No trans woman's competing in sports. That is very obvious to me. Um, I don't even, I shouldn't even need to get into that, right? There are huge advantages. If you're a biological male, even if you're pumping yourself full of hormones, even if you've done transition, uh, interventions, uh, doesn't make sense. No trans women's in prison. We're seeing men who decide to be women raping women in prisons. Okay. That cannot happen. You better believe that criminals are going to hack the system and game the system. No trans in opposite bathrooms. Like I said, okay. And where are the feminists on this one? That's my question, right? Feminists are here to protect women's rights. Women finally have gotten a seat at the table after many, many years of in history of being oppressed. They finally get a seat at the table. And now we are going to have men who are just going to one day decide that they're a woman and now be in some of the biggest magazines in the world, women of the year. Where are the feminists on this one? Let's protect women's rights here. Okay. Women are women. Now we can have trans sections of magazines or make it the trans woman of the year or man of the year, whatever it is, but stay away from our women. Okay. Again, don't expect society to tiptoe around you and change everything just because you are deciding one day that you want to be a different sex. It's just not fair. Okay. So my friends, if I was king of the world, I would say we care. We want to protect your right to disagree. As long as you protect my right to disagree with you, we want to protect your right to be free and do what you want, but you cannot change society. You can't infringe on people's rights and freedoms, especially women's and safety in this regard. Okay. The grooming and the conditioning to children is harmful. There are a lot of trans people out there or LGBTQ who will say, who have common sense, who are going to say, yeah, children shouldn't be learning about this. And we don't need to have parades and charades and everything like that about what we do in the bedroom. I don't need to be validated in my sexual orientation. I don't need to be validated in what I do in the bedroom or who I want to be with romantically, right? Or whether or not I want to be a man or a woman or identify as a, a lizard or, or anything, right? So let's keep the children out of this. And particularly, we need to protect people. I'd prefer under 25 from irreversible medical interventions. It can be very harmful later because the brain isn't even fully developed. We don't let kids tattoo themselves, go to war, drive, drink, smoke. So why would we allow them to make a decision for an irreversible surgery? Some people are losing their children because they refuse to do these harmful, essentially castrations, right? This is insanity. Please understand that once they have a fully developed brain and they are an adult, then they can make that decision. I would also want to really uh, promote that it's just okay to be a woman or a man. If you weren't biologically born that way, it's okay. Just identify it as an, and go from there. And I know people are going to say that I'm oversimplifying it, right? But that's the way it's always been. And then I would say we need to vastly invest into the root causes, the internal mental health issues that are going on with when someone feels uh, uncomfortable in the biological body that they were born in. My friends, that is my common sense approach to the transgender issue. Please let me know what you think. And please continue to talk about this very important issue. I love you guys. And we'll see you next week.